Thousands of people are confused because of the terrible storm that just happened in Germany. We are updating more information. A terrible storm had just swallowed Germany. What's going on? Is that a natural disaster or a sign from heaven? In this episode, I will explain in more detail. Smash that thumbs up button for me, leave me a comment down below and share this video with your friends. And let's get started. That day, Germany was engulfed in the devastation of a fierce storm. The tornado still frantically swept across the vast field, breaking trees rich in history like silent witnesses of time. Strong gusts of wind seemed to wrestle with skyscrapers, shaking every window pane and causing thick black clouds. A crazy, strong wind began to blow, cutting through skyscrapers and trees rich in history. Heavy rains fell like endless rivers, washing away everything in its path. On the streets of the big city, the roads became deserted, leaving only the ruins of chaos. The flickering streetlights bobbed amid the cold rain, creating red bulbs from the closed bars and shops. In the sky, dramatic black clouds rolled like wheels, covering the entire space. Thunder rumbled, the call of an angry nature, and the rain fell like endless rivers, washing away everything in its path. Der ist reingeknallt. Ja. Ach du Scheiße. Der ist rein. Oh. Da. But what makes this storm different is its terrifying shape. On top of the dark clouds, a clear image of a fire dragon began to form. Its nozzle was like a bright field of light, spewing fire and smoke, creating cold winds and rains of fire. This scene is enough to make everyone realize the infinite power of nature and the smallness of humans in this life. Germany, a modern and prosperous country, could not avoid the storm's destructive power. Thunder, blue and red sparks, like the hammers and axes of the lightning god, shot down from above, illuminating the night sky and making everything light up as if in a brilliant display. Underground, the sound of the powerful noise of thunder caused vibrations everywhere. 
The feeling of fear and excitement spreads through the space as each thunderstorm lasts, taking one into a world of invisible power that cannot be controlled. Thick black clouds came, followed by the sound of thunder and strong winds. Then from above, hailstones began to fall, like cold stones from another world. The hailstones hit the roofs and the dirt with unbelievable force, shattering everything in its path. Trees shook, and flowers and leaves scattered under the destructive force of the stone storm. The villagers, even though they were prepared, could do nothing but wait for the storm to pass. The noise of the stone hitting surrounding objects, accompanied by the screams of the howling wind, created a picture of horror and fear. The feeling of vibration is like the call of the earth when everything around begins to vibrate with an uncontrollable force. Outside, the roads turned into cracked strips like scars on the surface of the earth. Destruction spread from place to place as historic buildings and structures were destroyed, leaving behind a scene of devastation. Natural disasters such as violent storms and devastating earthquakes cause a series of notable consequences. First, there is human loss when thousands, even millions of people face death, injury and mental loss. Families fall apart, communities are destroyed and a region's economy can be severely weakened. Second, there is damage to infrastructure and the environment, with civil work such as houses, streets, bridges, and electricity and water systems destroyed or severely damaged. Ecosystems have also suffered heavy losses, with the loss of rich historical forests, the decline of animal species, and the pollution of water and land resources. Let's pray together for Germany. Dear God, we come before you in a time of anxiety and insecurity when Germany is facing fierce storms and terrible earthquakes. We ask God to give the people of Germany strength and comfort during these difficult times. Dear God, please protect Germany from natural disasters and bring peace and stability to this country. We pray in your name. Amen. Recently, a man shared the following clip on TikTok. A bizarre event was caught on camera in Mexico just minutes before a severe earthquake. There were several strange sounds recorded, as well as some weird weather events. There was a loud, thumping sound, as if something was constantly crashing on the ground. But that was not all that happened. Suddenly, a red and blue light flashed in the night sky forcing the entire street to go dark, followed by a long, heavy sound that could only be described as an extraordinarily loud siren. Many people captured this occurrence on camera, and it was even published by news outlets with no explanation for what generated the odd lights. People in the TikTok comments section allege that the government is testing HARP or Project Bluebeam, and that hearing these noises will have no positive consequences. People in the video appear to be really afraid. There is still no explanation for the video, but perhaps this is a sign that the end times are coming, because it appears in the sky of Mexico when an earthquake occurs, and coincidentally, it also appears in the sky of Germany. I don't think this is a coincidence. As outlined in biblical prophecy, the signs of the end times are unmistakably present, heralding a sequence of extraordinary events that defy human comprehension. These phenomena, occurring concurrently, serve as potent reminders of the impending judgment and the need for heightened vigilance. It is, indeed, a time for us to heed the warnings and tread cautiously, recognizing the divine significance behind these occurrences. A clarion call echoed by the trumpet of God as foretold in the scriptures. The unfolding of the sixth seal in Revelation paints a vivid tableau of celestial upheaval and earthly turmoil, 
ushering in a period known as the Great Tribulation. With each seal unveiled, the stage is set for a sequence of cataclysmic events, each more awe-inspiring than the last. The opening of the sixth seal unleashes a cascade of phenomena, described in apocalyptic language that transcends mere mortal comprehension. Scripture vividly depicts this momentous event, where the very fabric of the cosmos is rent asunder. Earthquakes shake the foundations of the world, while the sun, moon and stars undergo a dramatic transformation, heralding the arrival of divine judgment. These celestial portents, foretold by prophets of old, serve as harbingers of the impending day of reckoning, a time when the righteous will be vindicated, and the wicked will face the consequences of their deeds. As we navigate the turbulent waters of the end times, it becomes increasingly imperative to grasp the spiritual significance behind these cosmic signs. They are not merely omens of doom, but symbols of hope for those who place their trust in the Lord. The Apostle Paul reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of evil, urging us to stand firm in the face of adversity. In the midst of escalating chaos and despair, the message of Revelation resonates with renewed urgency. The sounding of the trumpets heralds the final showdown between good and evil, culminating in the ultimate triumph of righteousness. Yet, even amid the darkest hour, there remains a glimmer of hope for those who remain faithful to the end. As believers, we are called to interpret these signs with spiritual discernment recognizing them as divine invitations to repentance and renewal. The sixth trumpet, with its devastating consequences, serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of sin and the urgency of turning back to God. In conclusion, the signs of the end times are not to be feared, but embraced as reminders of God's sovereignty and the promise of redemption. As we await the fulfillment of prophecy, let us stand firm in our faith, knowing that our redemption draws near. The second coming of Jesus Christ is a fundamental belief among Christians worldwide. It is the belief that Jesus will return to the earth in bodily form to establish his kingdom and judge the world. The Bible provides numerous prophecies about the second coming of Jesus Christ, and understanding these prophecies is crucial for Christians seeking to live according to God's will. In this article, we will explore the second coming of Jesus Christ, including the prophecies, the signs, and what we can expect when he returns. The Old Testament contains several prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, including his second coming. One of the most well-known prophecies is found in Daniel 7.13, 14, which reads, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Other Old Testament prophecies include Zechariah 14, 1, 9, which describes the Battle of Armageddon and the return of Jesus Christ, and Isaiah 11, 1, 10, which describes the reign of Jesus Christ on earth and the peace that will come during his reign. The New Testament Prophecies The New Testament provides additional prophecies about the second coming of Jesus Christ. One of the most well-known is found in Matthew 24, 30, 31, which reads, Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Other New Testament prophecies include 1 Thessalonians 4.16, 17, which describes the rapture of the church, and Revelation 19.11, 16, which describes the second coming of Jesus Christ as a warrior king who will defeat his enemies and establish his reign on earth. 
The Sign of the Second Coming The Bible provides several signs that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. One of the most significant signs is found in Matthew 24, 6, 8, which reads, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Other signs include an increase in lawlessness and wickedness, Matthew 24, 12, false prophets and messiahs, Matthew 24, 24, and the preaching of the gospel to all nations, Matthew 24, 14. The Events Surrounding the Second Coming When Jesus Christ returns, there will be several events that will take place. First, the dead in Christ will rise from their graves and be reunited with their glorified bodies. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 Then, those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 This event is known as the Rapture of the Church. After the rapture, there will be a period of tribulation, which is described in detail in the book of Revelation. This period will last for seven years and will be characterized by wars, famine, and natural disasters. During this time, the Antichrist will rise to power and deceive many people, leading them away from the truth. At the end of the tribulation, Jesus Christ will return to the earth with his army of angels to defeat the Antichrist and establish his reign on earth. He will sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem and rule over all the nations of the earth. Isaiah 9, 6, 7 Benefits of Believing in the Second Coming Believing in the Second Coming of Jesus Christ has several benefits for Christians. First, it gives us hope and reassurance that one day we will be reunited with our Lord and Saviour. Second, it reminds us to live our lives in a way that honours God and prepares us for His return. Finally, it gives us a sense of purpose and direction as we seek to fulfil God's will and share the Gospel with others. Staying Motivated and Accountable as Christians, it is essential to stay motivated and accountable as we await the second coming of Jesus Christ. One way to do this is to read and study the Bible regularly, which will help us to grow in our faith and understanding of God's will. We should also pray regularly, seeking God's guidance and strength to help us live according to His plan. In addition, we should fellowship with other believers attending church services and participating in small groups or Bible studies. This will provide us with encouragement, support and accountability as we seek to live out our faith in a world that is hostile to the gospel. The second coming of Jesus Christ is a fundamental belief for Christians worldwide. Understanding the biblical prophecies and signs of his return is crucial for believers seeking to live according to God's will. We can find hope and reassurance in the fact that one day we will be reunited with our Lord and Saviour and enjoy eternal life in His kingdom. As we await His return, we must stay motivated and accountable, living our lives in a way that honours God and prepares us for His coming. Psalm 24, 9, 10 Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. This beautiful psalm builds in anticipation and praise for the coming King who will reign in glory forever. The promise of the kingdom of God. 2. For if Abraham was declared righteous by the works of the law, he has something to boast about, but not before God. 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. 4. Now to the one who works, his pay is not credited due to grace, but due to obligation. 5. But to the one who does not work, but believes in the one who declares the ungodly righteous, his faith is credited as righteousness. No amount of human goodness is as good as is the hope and good news taught throughout the Bible. 
In the New Testament, we come to understand that this refers to the second coming of Jesus Christ to rule as the King of kings and Lord of lords over all nations. Revelation 11, 15, 19, 16. Acts 15, 16, 17. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. At the historic Jerusalem conference of Acts 15, James summed up the conclusions of the conference. In this passage, James quotes from Amos 9.11, 12, to prove that God's plan includes the Gentiles as well as the descendants of Israel. I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, is a prophecy of Jesus Christ's second coming when he will rule on the throne of David, Luke 1.32. All people, not just the tribes of Israel, will be blessed by Jesus Christ's righteous rule. The introduction to the prophecy of Daniel 11 is given in the preceding chapter. This introduction is quite extensive, all of Daniel 10. It begins, In the third year of Cyrus king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Daniel 10.1 According to the Expositor's Bible Commentary, the third year of Cyrus was 535-534, in all probability just a few years before Daniel's death. Comment on Daniel 10.1 Through Nebuchadnezzar's dreams, Daniel 2.1, and through Daniel's vision of four beasts, Daniel 7, God had already revealed that there would be four world-ruling empires followed by the kingdom of God. Now, God was going to reveal to Daniel some amazing details about major world powers, beginning with the Medo persian Empire and continuing through the time of the end, just prior to Christ's second coming. The angel that came to help Daniel understand the vision told him that its focus was on what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Daniel 10.14 What would happen to the people of God, both in Daniel's time and in the future, was of great interest to him, as by then 42,360 Jews had returned to Jerusalem following a decree by Cyrus, allowing them to go back to their homeland. Ezra 2, 64. When was the book of Daniel written? The years Daniel mentions put this prophecy around 535 BC. This was the third year of Cyrus, Daniel 10, 1, and was after the event the angel mentioned to Daniel that happened in the first year of Darius, Daniel 11, 1, around 539 BC. We believe the biblical account is true, but some question the dating. Because of the many intricate components of the prophecy in Daniel 11, some scholars have suggested that the book of Daniel was written several hundred years later, during the 160 SBC, after these events had already transpired. Some find it hard to believe that the book of Daniel accurately predicted all these details in advance, but foretelling the future is not difficult for God. As God stated, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. Fulfilled prophecy in Daniel. Since other prophecies found in the book of Daniel, such as the 70-year prophecy of Jeremiah and the 70 weeks prophecy, indicating the year of the appearance of the Messiah, were fulfilled exactly as predicted, we can have confidence that God also provided the details found in this prophecy in Daniel 11 long before they took place. For further study of fulfilled prophecy, see Fulfilled prophecy is evidence of God's existence and Daniel's prophecies, proof of God's existence. The initial aspects of the prophecy of Daniel 11 have taken place precisely as God predicted. A comparison of secular history with the biblical record will reveal the fascinating details. Other parts, including the identity of the end-time king of the north and the end-time king of the south, are yet to be fulfilled. These unknown portions of the prophecy have been sealed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 4. 
An interesting point regarding this prophecy is that it appears to have been delivered orally. Unlike the preceding dreams and visions in the book of Daniel, which contained images that needed to be interpreted, this vision simply gave Daniel the words regarding what would happen to the Jewish people from this time forward. Daniel 10, 7, 9. The Medo-Persian Empire to be conquered by Greece. The prophecy of Daniel 11 begins with the prediction that three more kings will arise in Persia, followed by a fourth who would stir up all against the realm of Greece, verse 2. Biblical resources, such as the Expositor's Bible Commentary, provide the historical explanations for this prophecy. Regarding this verse, Expositor states, The Persian king who invaded Greece was, of course, Xerxes, who reigned 485, 464 BC. Daniel 11, 3, 4 speaks of the appearance of a mighty king, whose kingdom would be broken up and divided toward the four winds of heaven. Expositors explains, verse 3 introduces us to the next phase in world empires, the rise of Alexander the Great. Although this verse does not make it altogether clear that this mighty king would inaugurate a new empire in place of the Persian one, verse 4 leaves us in no doubt that he was the ruler predicted here. In seven or eight years he accomplished the most dazzling military conquest in human history, but he lived only four years more, and after one of his drunken bouts, he died of a fever in 323 in the imperial capital of Babylon. Verse 4 foretells the division of Alexander's domains among four smaller and weaker empires. Alexander the Great's empire divided. Following Alexander's death, his empire was divided among four of his generals. These four kingdoms and their rulers were Macedonia Greece under Antipater, and his son, Thrace Asia Minor, under Lysimachus, the rest of Asia except Lower Syria and Palestine under Seleucus Nicator, and Egypt and Palestine under Ptolemy. The remainder of Daniel 11. 5, 39 then documents the actions of the last two of these kingdoms, Egypt to the south of Jerusalem, the location of Daniel's people, the Jews, Daniel 10, 14, and Syria to the north of Jerusalem. In this section of scripture, the rulers and their successors are referred to as the King of the North and the King of the South. Who is the King of the North? So in Daniel 11, the King of the North refers to the successors to Seleucus, ruling north of the Holy Land. Who is the King of the South? In Daniel 11, the King of the South refers to the successors to Ptolemy, who ruled from Egypt, south of the Holy Land. As our article, The King of the South, shows, the end-time King of the South may represent the leader of a confederacy of Arab nations, or a powerful Arab nation. As it was historically, Egypt will likely be involved. Daniel 11.42 Daniel 11 explained, The King of the North versus the King of the South. Located geographically between ambitious kingdoms to the North and South, the Jewish people during post-exilic times were often caught in the rivalries for power between Egypt and Syria. While space does not permit a detailed explanation of every verse in Daniel 11, 5, 39 and its historical fulfillment, here are a few highlights. Verse 5. Expositors explains, The king of the south, verse 5, was to be Ptolemy Brain, Sota, son of Lagos, whose ambitions extended far beyond the borders of Egypt, over which Alexander had placed him in charge, to Palestine and the rest of Asia. The prince under Ptolemy I, who would become stronger than Ptolemy, I was Seleucus Nicator of the Seleucid Empire, Ibid. Verse 6. The agreement was a proposed peace treaty that called for Antiochus II to marry Berenice, the daughter of Ptolemy II. But Antiochus already had a wife, a powerful and influential woman named Laodice. She did not take kindly to being divorced. She therefore organized a successful conspiracy. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.